Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Plymouth Coliseum here in Plymouth for this National Development League meeting between the newly formed Plymouth Centurions and the Kent Royals. We're in, the, in for a bumper meeting tonight. You're going to see it all live here on Gladiators Live TV. We're going to see 15 races behind the scenes in the pits area. And before the meeting started this afternoon, I went into the pits and saw a couple of riders and see what they had to save themselves. Okay, so we're in the pits area and uh, before meeting this afternoon, we've got Henry Atkins with us. Henry, your first match this season. How are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I'm buzzing to be honest with you. I'm obviously having last season out. Um, wasn't ideal and um, just been training through the winter. Had a couple of good practices at the beginning of the year. So um, yeah, just can't wait now. Of course, pressing practice on Saturday was uh, very different conditions than it was today. So will that affect bike setup or change anything like that? Um, obviously, I'm in heat four, so I can sort of see a couple of heats before I go out, see if I need to make any changes. Um, I think it might be a little bit more drivey, a bit more dirt on the outside due to sort of the colder conditions keeping the moisture in but um, yeah hopefully it doesn't change too much um, but we'll have to see and just make any changes if we have to. Obviously right number five tonight of course I guess the goal for you is to get number one correct? Yeah no definitely obviously um, at the end of the day it's a team and so whichever number I ride at I'll put 110% in and um, make sure I score as many points as I can and if I'm if I'm scoring enough and fighting for a position number one then that, that's what happens but for now my aim is just to be at number five and just help the team win wherever I can. And of course a lot of matches for this year with the Gladiators as well so uh, again more miles on the, on the clock for you yeah no definitely um, luckily enough I sort of went self-employed at the beginning of the year so I take days off when I need to to uh, sort the bikes out but yeah no being busy sort of helps improve your riding really because you're on the bike constantly you know how the bike feels and how, know how to set it up so uh, no I just can't wait now to just get all my meetings in and um, have a good time now of course last time you were here when racing competitively you had an 18 point maximum can we expect the same tonight Oh, I'd love it to be. Um, <laughs> no, I remember the 18-point maximum. It was sort of a really good sort of end, end to that season, really. Not having like any season with COVID and stuff and just to have a couple of meetings and score two sort of big hit numbers and both my meetings was really good. And then obviously to finish on a maximum was, was ideal. So if I can sort of start where I finished off, um, yeah, it'll be the dream, dream, dream start this year. Well, all the best tonight, mate. We'll wish you both up for the meeting. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, visiting rider tonight, Jamie Halder. Jamie, you're uh, returning from injury. How's the uh, fitness going for you? Yeah, yeah, it's going well. Looking forward to be back. Feeling good on the bike in practices and stuff and just looking forward to get riding. You've been here before. Obviously, you made a couple of guest appearances and a few seasons ago. So uh, does the track look different at all from what you raced to last time? Uh, it's been a while. It looks about the same to me. I don't really, <laughs> don't really remember. Of course, you've got Alfie in the team this season, obviously racing here out for the Gladiators. So you get a bit of uh, tips from him to how to ride the track? Uh, yeah, it should be helpful. It should be, should be good. It should be strong, yeah. And for yourself, goals for the season, obviously, because you come back from injury, so uh, what's your targets for the year? Uh, just see how well I can ride, really. Not really got any set targets. Of course, a different track for Kent this year, not racing at Central Park. Does that put, does that put uh, any sort of doubt in your head, like, obviously, with a set of changes and stuff? Uh, no, it's all right. I hadn't really rode Kent that much. Went down to I Wade, where they are now, the other week for the press and practice, and really nice track. Rode really well, nicely, yeah. That's great. We wish you all the best of luck for tonight, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Cheers. So we are close to starting time. Let's take a look at the two teams for this coming matchup. Starting with the home team, Plymouth Centurions, at number one is Dan Jilks on a 10.30 average. Next to him, number two on a 3.57 average is Connor King. Number three sees Richard Andrews on a 6.55 average. Number four, Adam Excellence on a 5.67. Captain Henry Atkins on a 5.86. And the two reserves, Ben Trigger on a 3.57. And Eli Meadows on a 3 average. His their team manager is Matty Bates. Across to the Kent Royals now at number one is Gladiator himself, Alfred Botel at 9.78. Number two sees Jamie Halder on a 4.63. Dan Averge, the skipper, on a 5.56 goes number three. Number four sees Joe Olcock on a 4.36. The ever popular Ben Morley at 9.18 goes at number five. And the two reserves, Debutant Chris Watts on a three point average, and also Sam Woolley at number seven on a three point average. Their team manager is John Sanford. So you see the Plymouth Centurions and the Kent Royals on track. So ten, Kent number one is Alfie Botel. Riding at number two is Jamie Holder. Number three is the captain, Dan Verge. At four, Joel Olcock. Five is Ben Morley. Number six making his debut tonight is Chris Watts. And seven is Sam Woolley. 
across to the Centurions now. So at number one, we have Dan Jokes. At two, we see Connor King. Number three, ever popular, Richard Andrews. His partner at four, we have Adam Excellence. At five, Henry Atkins. Now here's the one I want to see. Ben Trigger, number six. Ben Trigger, their home debut for this young man. And finally, number seven, number seven is Eli Meadows. So all four riders coming to the line here for this opening race heat number one. So then here we go on the inside in blue is Connor King. Next him in yellow is Jamie Holder. Gate three riding in red for the Centurions, Dan Jilks. And on the outside in white is Alfie Botel. Heat number one, the first race of the Centurions here at the uh, Coliseum. For this, the first race, first race, the new era here at the Coliseum for the Plymouth Centurions. So the riders are coming up to the line now. We've got King, it's Holder, it's Gilks, and it's Botel. Here we go, stand by for action. And away they go. And a flying start from Botel from the outside. Gets across Dan Gilks. Down the back straight to go for the first time. Botel leading. Gilks now settling in, in second place. At the moment, it's a three-all with Halder at the back, with Connor King in third. But it's all about these first two. Botel is under pressure from Dan Jilks. This is fantastic with two laps gone. Jilks now down the inside. Botel holds off there completely. What a race there so far. We've got Botel leading. Jilks in second. He will not start as Jilks tries the inside, but gets a little bit squirrely there in the first corner. With uh, Connor King in third. Looks like a share of the spoils in this opening race. Botel there getting one over on his uh, Gladiators team, uh, team Patra. Um, uh, Dan Jilks there, the Botel leading the way. Dan Jilks second, Connor King third. It's going to be a share of the sports in the first race. The coming of the third and fourth turn for the final time. It's going to be a win for Alfie Botel. Second, Dan Jilks. Third, Connor King. And Jamie Halder at the back there. But what a race to start this proceedings with Botel there taking the win. Getting over his uh, team partner or his Centurion, his teammate there, Alfie Botel. But well done to Alfie, that takes the win, takes the three points. Second place to Dan Jilks, third to Connor King, and fourth, Jamie Halder. What must be going through Ben Trigger's mind right now? What do you reckon, nerves? I'm sure it'll all get behind him. So here we go, heat number two. On the inside in white is Chris Watts. Gate two in red is Ben Trigger. Gate three in yellow, Sam Woolley, and in Blue off the outside is Eli Meadows. So three points apiece for the first opening race here at the Coliseum. The home of the Centurions, it is three points apiece after the first race. What can Trigger and Meadows do here against Watts and Woolley? So stand by for action, folks. Here we go. Heat number two. Bikes coming to life. Tapes up and away they go. And a good start from Sam Woolley there. In fact, it's the, it's the Royals one and two. Trigger now round the outside of, of what's in the second place now. Self after Sam Woolley. Meanwhile, Woolley in the lead there. Here comes Trigger. Here he comes. He's going to self after um, Sam Woolley now. But Woolley they're leading the way. Second place, Trigger. Third is what's the 4-2 to the Royals at the moment with Meadows at the back. Two laps gone, two to go. What can Ben Trigger do? He's going to look for the outside blast, but he's not quite there. He's closing the gap on him. Oh, he gets it. It's They're all hugging the inside line. But it's, uh, it's Woolley there leading the way so far. Trigger is right on his back wheel with one lap to go. Sam Woolley, Ben Trigger, neck and neck. Oh, my whoa! And there it goes. Ben Trigger, he's gone down. And Meadows has had to bid it down. The red lights come on. Oh, what a shame, because that was going to be such a good race. What a shame there. 
Just make the referee's decision there. Inside that last, that was looking good for uh, Benny. Was on the pace and he was almost there, but just lost the back end. So a shame there for uh, young Ben. It was looking good so far up until that point. But it was a win for uh, Sam Woolley. Second place to team partner Chris Watts. Third to Eli Meadows and fourth Ben Trigger. So eight points to four in favour of the Kent Royals with heat number three coming up. And here's the lineup on the inside in blue is Adam Extance. Next to him in white off of gate two, Dano Verge. Gate three in red sees Richard Andrews. And on the outside in yellow is Joe Olcock. Eight points to four in favour of these Royals. What can the Centurions do? With Extance and Andrews, you're always you're guaranteed classic Rich this year. So Richard Andrews there making his uh, return in the number three position this year, having raced in the, having gone from two wheels to four wheels in the um, Formula Two Series stock cars. Mind this is like banger race as well, isn't it? Because obviously it's crash bang wallop. So here we go, the riders coming up to line. We've got Extance, Verge, Andrews, and Olcock. Riders are settling in. Referee puts his finger on the button. And away they go. And a charge for the first corner. It's the Centurions first away. It's Andrews and Extance, one and two. Old cut round the outside of Extance into second place. Andrews there getting away. Meanwhile, surprisingly there, Dan and Verge at the back. Richard Andrews there leading the way. Old cut in second place, four, two at the moment. Watch out for Verge and Extance in battle for third place. But meanwhile, Richard Andrews showing his class around this track. Leading the way, taking the uh, three. Looks like he's going to take a win there. So far, so good. Olcock in second, battle for third between Verge and Extance. Extance there holding it tight on the inside. Olcock comfortably in second. It's a battle for third as, as uh, oh, Dano Verge has gone down on turn four, which leaves uh, the Centurions on a two on a four two. In fact, the red lights have come on. Have they? Yeah, the red lights are on. Very late there to see them come on. But that should be awarded in favour of the 4-2 for the Centurions there. With Andrews taking the win, Olcock in second. Disappointing there for Dan Verge coming home on the deck there. But uh, let's see what we can do. So Richard Andrews there taking the win. Second in yellow was Joe Olcock. Third, Adam Extance. And fourth, Dan Verge. Eight points to ten now. But uh, here we go with the Centurions on gates one and three. Henry Atkins there off of gate number three. Here's the lineup. We see Eli Meadows on the inside in blue. Next to him in yellow, Sam Woolley. Gate three in red, Henry Atkins. And on the outside in white is Ben Morley. So eight points to ten in favour of Kent. Two points to gap after that 4-2 in heat number three. What can Henry Atkins do and Eli Meadows So the riders there taking their time to get onto the center, onto the uh, track, start line. Star Marshal calling them into line. So here we go, Meadows, Woolley, Atkins and Morley. Mal Morley, they're the last to settle. Star Marshal's happy. Stand by for action, folks. Here we go, heat four, bikes roar. And away they go, and a flyer from the, from the Royals duo. It's Woolley and Morley, one and two. Morley around the outside of his team partner to the lead. Morley there in the lead. Woolley in second. Atkins in third place. Fourth to Meadow. But meanwhile, Ben Morley liking his track. He made many guest appearances as Atkins has gone all over the place and he's hit the fence and he's gone down. Very awkwardly there, Henry Atkins has gone down. Referee there stopping the race. Red lights to come on. And again, another stoppage for the uh, Centurions now. This is going from bad to worse for them with Trigger falling off, and then a 4-2 against, and now Atkins there binning it on the second turn. But it's good to see him back up and about. So of course the rerun of Heat 4. No ride on gate three as Henry Atkins excluded. So it's all down to Eli on the inside there in blue. Second, uh, gate two in yellow is Sam Woolley. And on the outside is Ben Morley. So the, the Royals there 
on paper will have this race in the bag. But of course, anything can happen in Speedway, and it usually does. So Meadows, Woolley and Morley take number two. Here we go. And away they go to charge for the first corner. And as expected, it's the, it's the Royals first to show. Morley and Woolley, one and two. Meadows there a distant third place. Getting some laps in the young man in his debut season for the Centurions this year. But Ben Morley looking ever so smooth out in front. With Woolley in second, this will be the first 5-1 of the meet. Sorry, it'll be the second 5-1. Morley there, clean out in front. Woolley there in second. Meadows there, still getting his feet in this league. Debut year for the young man, as I said before. With one lap to go, Ben Morley there leading the way. So Sam Woolley there in second, and Eli Meadows in third place. The second 5-1 for the Royals, and the first win of the night for Ben Morley. Takes the win. Second place, Sam Woolley. And third, Eli Meadows with a 5-1 for the Royals there. So well done there to Ben. So 15 points to nine in favor of the Royals. Six points to the gap so far. Also Henry there getting his, uh, his bike checked. Obviously taking a tumble in his first ride. Hopefully he'll come back. Obviously the bike they're getting some trailer. So he's uh, adjusting the, the clutch there, the uh, clutch plates. Obviously it'll be full of dirt from coming a cropper on the track there. Uh, good first race, mate. Three points after the first race. How did you find it? Yeah, it weren't too bad. It's, it's a lot different to it was on Saturday, but yeah, it's all right. We'll get used to it, and it's, I think it'd be a good home track advantage in the end of it because everyone's making mistakes at the minute, home team and away. So when they stop making mistakes, I think it'd be quite a good home advantage. So we'll see what happens. You think track will change during the night, obviously, with the, with the conditions like it is now? To be honest, I don't really have a clue. So. The, the outside to be probably deep how it is now where Henry just come off but the inside will probably be like concrete so we just have to ride inside or outside well, well there you go mate we'll have a good night good night how you doing Dan first race second place obviously good race back with um, Alfie that was a track for you uh, yeah no the track's perfect um, you know it's probably the best I've ever rode it it's uh, you know just a case of getting off the starts and you know we'll try and keep improving as the meeting goes on Bit different also to Saturday, obviously being a bacon or sunshine, and compared to that to now, does it ever um, like track conditions like setup wise? Is it do, like they change for your bike? Uh, not really. It's you know the, the track's very similar, a little bit more moisture, but you know it's still the same shape. <laughs> That's cool. Well, see, good luck in next race. We'll see you a bit of it. Cheers. Thank you. So Centurions with two and four. Here's the lineup on the inside in yellow. Jamie Holder. Next to him in red, he, uh, Richard Andrews. Gate number three in white, Alfie Botel. And on the outside. In blue is Adam Extant, 15 points to nine in favor of the Royals as we go into this next race. Looks like Holder and Extant are ready, just waiting for Andrews and Botel. So then here we go, heat number five. Stand by for action, green light comes on and away they go. As expected, Botel first to the corner. Centurions packing the minor place in second and third. Richard Andrews there in second. Excellence in third. Holder at the back. In fact, Andrews has gone down on turn three. The conditions there for proving tricky. Botel there, clean out in front. Excellence second. Holder now inherits third in place of in, uh, Richard Andrews. But meanwhile, Botel looking good out in front. Second place is Excellence, third. Holder. Here comes Andrews. Not quite there to catch up with one lap to go. Alfie there looking at two out of two. He's miles in front. With Extens and Holder battling for second and third with Andrews in fourth. Alfie Botel, what can you say? Half a corner in front and what a win. Made the start from gate three. Extens there takes second, Holder third, another 4-2. So unfortunate there for, for Richard Andrews, they're coming to Cropper. So Alfie there takes the win. Second was Adam Exxon. Third, Jamie Holder. Fourth with Richard Andrews. So 54.44. So here's the lineup on the inside in red. It's Dan Jilks, gate two in white, Ben Morley. 
Heat three in blue, Connor King. And on the outside in yellow, Chris Watts. 19-11 in favor of the Royals. So what can jokes to here with the inside starting position? Start Marshall there calling them in to line. So it's Jilks, Morley, King, and Watts. Here we go. Oh, and Morley there. Did he anticipate it there? Refs let it go. Jilks out in front. Watts has gone down at the back. 4 2 at the moment to the Centurions. Jilks there leading the way. Morley had a little bit of a nibble at the start there. Ref let it go. He penalised himself. But Dan Jilks looking as he ever was on press day on Saturday. He looked absolutely superb on track. Jilks there leading, Morley second, pretty much strung out a 4-2 at the moment as it stands for the Centurions. But of course, don't count out Ben Morley. He will do whatever it takes to close the gap. With Connor King in fourth place there, one lap to go. Dan Jilks going to get his first heat win for the Centurions this season. Plenty more of those I'm sure we'll see over this year. Morley second, Connor King there taking the third spot. And here he comes. First one of the season for Dan Gilles, what a ride. Well done, Dan, taking the win there. What a win. Dan Gilles there takes the win, second place, Ben Morley, third, Connor King, fourth, Chris Watts. So Dan Gilles goes on to five points from his two rides. Henry Atkins and Dan O'Burge against Ben, uh, and Ben Trigger, Joe Olcock, the other two riders in this race. So, Dan O'Verge on the inside in white. Next to him in red, Henry Atkins. Joe Olcock lines up in yellow. And on the outside in blue is Ben Trigger. On paper, you would think that Atkins would jump out the start. I think he will. Here we go. Verge, Atkins. Woolley and Trigger, away they go. Charge to the first corner, Atkins there leads the way. Olcock around the outside in the second place. Dan O'Verge holding third, Ben Trigger at the back. Atkins there showing what he's nice of. Great out the start there to charge the first corner. Atkins there leading the way. Olcock in second, Verge holding third. Trigger at the back. This will do the Royals nicely, it will maintain their lead that they have. But Atkins there now putting his foot down. Showing what he can do. Oh, in fact, he's pulled up. Unbelievable. Kent Royals gifted a 5-1. Commentators curse yet again. Unless Trigger can do something very special. But I doubt he will, but what's it? Here he comes on a third and fourth turn. Is he close enough? No, he's not. Is he? Oh, just on the line there. Dan O'Verge holds it. So the 5-1 there for the Royals. Taking the win was Joe Olcock. Third, second, Dan O'Verge. Third, Ben Trigger. So 26-16 now. So uh, here we go, then the rise coming to the line now. We've got uh, Connor King, Ben Trigger, Jamie Halder, and uh, it's, uh, Sam Woolley. So 16-26 in favour of the Royals. What can Trigger and King do in this second second stage in of heat number eight? So here we go then, the riders are coming up to the order now. We've got uh, Trigger and Holder last to settle. Here we go, heat number eight, stand by for action. And away they go, and a start to the first corner is Halder first to show. In fact, oh my goodness me, what's a hit there. Trigger and Woolley coming to grief there on the first corner, and that looked painful. That looked painful, Trigger there down. Oh, paramedics there calling there. Obviously concerns there, so we've, we've cut away from the incident. There's Connor King lining up on the outside start position. Will we see Ben come out? 
Well, here we go then, heat number eight, second time of asking. Sam Willey excluded for being a course of stoppage. Ben Trigger, gate two, blue. Jamie Harder, gate three, white. Connor King, gate four, in red. Bikes all fit, he's fit, he's ready to go. So it's Trigger, Holder and King, rerun of heat number eight, second time of asking. The Royals lead by 10 points. What can Holder and King do, or can uh, Trigger and King do here? Here we go, and away they go. And Holder streaks out the start there. What a start from Jamie Holder. Connor King down the inside, but not quite there. Holder there, hugs the outside curve, getting the grip on the outside and leads the way. Connor King there second, Ben Trigger in third place. A thrill at the moment. Jamie Holder there leading. Ben, uh, Connor King closed the gap in second place. Trigger there just getting his feet in this race. But meanwhile, Jamie Holder there leading. Connor King in second. Connor King getting so much speed in the surf in the first turn. Trigger there just finding his feet in second, in third there. But meanwhile, one lap to go. Jamie Holder leading the way. Connor right on his tail. Both of them hugging the inside line there. It's going to be a win for Holder. In fact, he's gone a bit wide on the fourth turn. Here comes King. What can he do here? Run to the line. Holder holds on. Well, what a ride there from Jamie Holder. Holds off Connor King. What a race there. Well done to Connor. So three points apiece there. So still 10 points a gap. Alfie, two rides, two wins so far, looking good. Thank you, yeah, no, enjoying it, so uh, happy days. Winning by postcode in that last race, how'd you find it? Ah, oh, yeah, no, it's, um, the track was uh, a bit overwatered, so I just sort of kept my cool and uh, just rode my own race, so it was good. I guess making starts tonight is most important to the way the, the way the track is at the moment? Yeah, just everything into them starts and uh, the rest should follow, so no, having a good one, um, yeah, so happy days. Always well, mate, we'll see you in a bit. All right, Jamie, obviously a nice win there. Obviously he held on for the uh, for the win there, but Connor was right behind you, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, it was nice. He found a decent setup now and felt a lot quicker in that one than in my last few. Made a decent gate in it. Yeah, went all right. Ten points up so far, 19-29 favour of the Royals now. Can the boys continue this for this good form? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't see don't see why not. Everyone's riding well and hopefully we can win it by a decent amount. Seen you making a lot of starts tonight, the boys. I've spoken to Alfie saying making starts tonight. Obviously, track conditions, uh, how they were, obviously, for the start of the meeting, of the present practice was uh, baking hot sunshine. Today was quite, obviously, the sun's gone down, a bit colder now. Does that affect it at all? Uh, well, yeah, it's a bit greasier now. It, I think they said they'd put a bit more dirt on from the press and practice or something like that. But, yeah, you really need to make a gate. It's quite hard to pass around here. So, yeah, make a gate and go, I think. All best, mate. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Dano. Chris Crick on board, obviously uh, 10 points up, boys doing good so far? Yeah, the boys are doing amazing. Um, you know, I'm, I've not had a great night, I fell off my first one, as you see. Um, and then I was spinning up massively in the last one, so I made a couple of changes. I dropped a tooth and put the wheel further forward and dropped some tyre pressure. So I've done quite a lot of changes for this next one. Um, so we'll have to go out and see if I can get some grip out there. Making starts most important, obviously, they've just walked the track now, so obviously uh, that sets them from playing it. Yeah, I mean... All, all the boys, <laughs> all the uh, Plymouth boys didn't want it watered, but it's going down, so we'll see see how that changes things. All right, we'll see you in a bit. See you in a bit. So the full lineup we have on the inside, gate one, Ben Morley. Gate two, in blue, is Adam Exton. Gate three, in white, is sorry, in yellow, is Chris Watts. And on the outside, in red, Richard Andrews. It's going to be three riders only, and Andrews has packed up. Oh, what a shame, because goes from bad to worse, Richard Andrews. So here we go then, heat number nine is underway. And it's Morley first of the corner. Excellence there second. Chris Watson, though, I don't know what happened to Richard Andrews' bike there. It just seemed to just die on him on the start line. Meanwhile, Ben were looking ever so smooth out in front. Excellence in second, Chris Watts in third. Not a lot you can say now because they're all they're strung up together. But meanwhile, Ben Morley out in front. Him and Botel, Heat 13 will be very, very special. I'll tell you for a start. So another 4 2 in favour of the Royals. I'll take that, that, extend their lead with one lap to go. Ben Morley leading the way. 
almost coasting at half throttle there. He can, he's almost half a corner in front. Exton second, Watts in third. It's going to be another win for a, Centur for a Royal. Ben Morley takes his, the win there. Second place, Adam Exton's third, Chris Watts. So 33-21 in favour of Kent. Joe there on the favoured inside starting the grid. Dan Jokes on the outside. This is the full lineup here. We have gate one in yellow, Joe Alcock. On gate two in blue, Connor King. On three in white, Dan O'Verge. And on four is Dan Jokes in red. It's been the Dan Jokes for the meeting, as you, as you saw there. Made some changes to his bikes. So here we go then, settling into heat number 10. Alcock, King, Burge, Gilks. Here we go. And away they go. And in fact, this again, it's the Royals first to show. But here comes Dan Jilks around the outside of Olcott and steams down the inside of Dan O'Verge. That was sensational. What a ride there from Dan Jilks. Missed the start, picked them off one by one. Inside one, outside the other. And he's now cleared off in front. Second place there, Dan O'Verge. Third place, Joe Olcott at the moment. King now round the outside of Olcott. But he overshoots and has gone down heavy on the outside there. Gone down heavy and the red lights have come on yet again. What is going on with these Centurions tonight? Another stoppage, another rider down. And that looks quite painful. Looks, sounds to be okay, so obviously Matty Bates there got in the, uh, the race, race kit. Oh yeah, Connor is up, which is good to see. A little bit wobbly there, but uh, hopefully he's gonna be all right to take his place in the next meetings that come down here. But it's good to see Connor back on his feet. So, gate number one in yellow, Joe Olcock. No rider on gate two. Connor King excluded. That's been the primary cause of stoppage in the last race. Gate three in white. It's Dan O'Verge. And on the outside there is Dan Jilks. Stand by for action, folks. Here we go. Heat number 10. Star Wars is happy. And away they're going again. This time, Jilks makes a superb start. What a start from Dan Jilks. From four to the inside, what a start from the young man. Olcock in second, Verge in third. This will do the Royals nicely. But Dan Jilks there leading the way. Will give himself a second heat win of the night. But a three-all will do the Royals nicely. I will say heat 13 can be very, very tasty. If on this form, Dan Jilks clear out in front. He can almost coast it home, he's so far in front with Olcock in second, Burge in third. A three-all as it stands. Into the bottom turn for the final time. Dan Jilks, Joe Olcock, Dan O'Verge, that's how it finishes. Dan Jilks wins. Olcock in second, Dan O'Verge there taking the third place. But what a ride there from Dan Jilks. So, heat number 11, gate one in red, Henry Atkins. Gate two in, in white, Alfie Botel. Gate three is a reserve replacement, Eli Meadows in place of Ben Trigger. And on the outside in yellow is Jamie Halder. Heat number 11, looking forward to bounce back, getting another win under, under his belt. As we head towards the interval here, heat number 11, the last before the interval. Here we go. Botel last to settle in. So here we go, Atkins, Botel, Meadows, and Jamie Halder. And away they go, and what a start from Henry! Where has he found that from? He trapped Botel like a cut cat! What a start there from Henry, Botel there second. So here we go, now we've got a race now, Atkins there leading the way, Botel second. Jamie Halder's got third place sewn up with Meadows at the back. Botel not looking for the outside on Atkins in turns three and four. He's going high, wide and handsome. But what can Atkins do? He's blocking the track. Keep your eyes on this one as Botel goes out wide. He's almost in the fence. Battling hard there with Henry Atkins. But meanwhile, Atkins there leading the way. One lap to go. It's all about the front two. Atkins, Botel's going wide. He's going wider and wider. Here he goes round the outside. Has he got him? Not quite there as he comes to the third and fourth turn. 
He's gone wide again. Can he get it? Run to the line. And it's Atkins gets it. What a ride from Henry Atkins. Taking that win. What a ride. What a start. Best race of the night there. Botel was on Henry like an absolute cut cap. But what a ride there from Henry. Taking the win there. Fantastic. So the result there of that win of heat number 11 was Henry Atkins taking the win. Second place, Alf Botel. Third place, Jamie Halder. And fourth was Eli Meadows. Obviously, first match for the boys today. Obviously, it's going a bit, uh, bit downhill, but obviously the boys are still digging in and uh, keeping it close the best they can. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if we haven't had any bad luck, we wouldn't have had any luck at all tonight. But um, that's Speedway, um, you know, it's better to have these sort of meetings at the beginning, I think, because uh, we know exactly then what we're going to do the rest of the season. Um, we've just had a bit of a team chat. Um, and I've just sort of said to the guys, like, it's still possible. It's a big ask, but as cliche as it sounds, there's nothing to lose, so we might as well go for it. Um, if we do get something out of it, we've earned it that bit more. But, you know, the main thing is that Connor and Ben heal up and are ready for the next time meeting against Fellview. But, yeah, I'm proud of them. You know, it's, it's first meeting jitters. A lot of them not ridden together before. A few of them have. Tracks are different in March and October to how they are, you know, from April to sort of September. So it's, they can look grippy as Connor showed it. Looked like there was a bit of dirt, but nothing to hold them up really. But the track's riding nicely. You know, the boys are trying hard. Um, they don't fall off unless they aren't trying. So, you know, we'll write this one off, really, I think, realistically. But um, move on to the next one. But the main thing is that, the two, you know, Connor and, and Ben are healthy and fit and ready ready for Bellevue. That's cool. We'll let you on and we'll uh, see you later, meeting, right? Thanks very much. Cheers. Chris, how you doing, mate? Uh, looking at that experience from, uh, like, from a reserve point of view. Yeah, it's a huge help to me. You come here and you wonder whether you've set up right or not. And then you ask them and they say, yeah, you have. Just crack on with it. And you think, yeah, okay, I'll take that. As I said, debut season for yourself. And uh, obviously, how are you finding it? Obviously, first match for the year. Um, any sort of pre-season nerves you had when you got the phone call from uh, Kent to ride for him? I don't know, a little bit of excitement, I think, to start with. And then I, I don't know if I'd say I was more nervous today than usual. Um, yeah, probably more pressure, but you try not to put that on yourself, don't you? So, yeah, no, so far, so good. I think I saw you race at the, uh, for the Isle of Wight last time you were down here at the number eight. So, um, obviously, in, in the main team, now in reserve, I guess the challenge now is to go for the, uh, for the top spot. Yeah, all in good time, eh? All in good time. I'll be happy to score some points down at reserve and, uh, yeah, see where we go. Learn some experience from the boys and just enjoy it. Awesome. We'll get on and uh, go up for tonight. No worries. Thank you. Cheers. Adam, a bit of a not decent meeting for you, though, so for the, for the guys tonight? Yeah, I think we've had a bit of bad luck um, with a couple of guys, like... Uh, Richard's chain snapped in one and Henry's uh, pull cord come out but um, yeah it's the first one so get all the things out of the way and when we can keep pushing on them. A lot of uh, match night, a lot of the race has been done by gate and style so a lot of gates been taking place and uh, seems to the boys sort of not making the gates nice because it's like just pre-meeting jitters or anything like that or just like uh, not right set up? Uh, it's just the first one it's been a long time it's like couple of months for everyone's race so it's just getting getting back into it and the start's quite slick tonight compared so um yeah just a bit of setup and just keep going amazing person for a set when it's like baking hot sunshine it's, it's, it's uh, cold as anything though isn't it yeah it is a bit chilly <laughs> well wish all the best mate we'll see you at bellevue all right thank you how you doing mate obviously first couple of rides not the best for you but obviously got that first win for you must be happy with that one yeah yeah, no, definitely. Obviously, sort of first two rides think ideal. Um, ideally, I would like to have the second one in me for second ride, but um, yeah, just cut out, got caught in my jacket and came out, so unfortunately it happened. But I've got to move on from that. You can't sort of draw on it. So yeah, I moved on to it, changed a few things, and um, yeah, the bike was working well then. So I've changed a few more things. Hopefully, you just get a bit more speed. But no, happy to sort of get the first win in now. Yeah, that'll be all over you, mate. I was, I was screaming on that there on the commentary to the very mate. It was fantastic. Then did two, you going like side by side and stuff. Good, good, pushing good stead for a Tuesday against Berg against Paul Knockout Cup. Obviously, first Knockout Cup for the for the club this year. Obviously, looking forward to it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it'll be good sort of ride with Alfie and serve against him. Um, and now it was a good race between us. I heard him sort of behind me, and I sort of had to keep on changing lines, sort of throw him off a little bit. And um, yeah, no, it was just a good race between us, really. But yeah, we need to hit Paul hard um, Tuesday. Um, obviously, hit him hard at their place too, because uh, they seem to be pretty good run there so far. So um, yeah, no, hopefully get get through to the next next round of the trophy and um, bring a trophy back to Plymouth. I think we'll let it get on. We'll see in Heat 13. Cheers. Thank you. So the riders there coming out for Heat number uh, 12. There is Richard Andrews. Obviously fixed this chain from his last race. 
Richie Bills off the inside, favourite gate number one. Next him in what in yellow is Chris Watts. Gate number three in blue, Eli Meadows. And on the outside in white is Dan O'Verge. Obviously the first match for all these riders, they want to get all the cobwebs out of the way and uh, see what they can do in the next match, which the Centurions will be hosting against Bellevue. So, gate one in red, Richard Andrews. Gate number two in yellow, Chris Watts. In gate three in blue, Eli Meadows. And on the outside in white is Dana Verge. So here we go. Heat number 12, that's got underway. Start Marshall's happy. Reference the green light on, and here we go. And away they go. And a charge for the first corner. It is Richard Andrews. In fact, Meadows has gone down straight away there. Got himself back up. That's good to see. This Andrews out in front. <coughs> uh, Verge there in second. In fact, old cause. So Watts has gone down as well. Watts has gone down too. The track is really pressuring these riders right now. So Richard Andrews there leading the way. Second is Dano Verge. Third is Chris Watts. And Meadows is at the back. Well, who would have scripted this? Andrews there going wide on the dirt there, picks up some grip and gets down the back straight. Verge there in second place. Watson Meadows halfway around, also Al in front. Richard there leading the way, second down over Verge. Track conditions there, uh, proving fundamental in this race. There's Chris Watts, Meadows there comes through. It's going to be Richard Andrews taking the win. Second goes to Dano Verge. It's all about who finishes third. Who's going to come around in third? It's going to be Chris Watts. Chris Watts gets the third place, which levels a three off for the for the match. So the win there for Richard Andrews. Second place went to Dano Verge. Third to Chris Watts. And fourth to Eli Meadows. So another three all drawn race there. 55-81 was the final score. So the final was the time. So 30-42. So here we go. Gate number one in White, Alfie Botel. Gate two in red, Dan Jilks. Gate three in yellow, Ben Morley. And on the outside in blue is Henry Atkins. My goodness me, what a race this is going to be here right now. As the start marshal calls them to order, it's Botel, Jilks, Morley, Atkins. Here we go, heat 13 is underway. And Morley again there with a little bit of a similar start. And the race has been stopped. Morley there, jumped the start, so uh, a warning for him, but my goodness me, bit of a nervy start there. Tunis Alarms is straight back on for the riders. Heat 13. So a warning to the rider in yellow, Ben Morley, all four back. So the two-minute time lapse is straight back on for the four, they're not messing about here. So an official warning board there comes out for Ben Morley. Heat 13, Botel, Jilks, Morley, Atkins, take two. And away they go this time. And a flyer from, oh, and Jilks has hit the deck. Got a clip there, I believe, from Botel's back wheel that sent him off. But I um, have to wait for the referees to sit on that one. That seemed to be a bit of an all four, well, there we go. There we go, all four back in. I did. I did tell you that Heat 13 was going to be a bit of a bit of a crazy one because of the the caliber of the Heat 13 they have here at the moment. But it's good to see Dan Jilks back on his bike, back on his feet, and they're just getting a quick check over from uh, from Maddie Bates there. Uh, obviously, a bit of uh, bike maintenance is going to take place. Unchanged lineup: Botel, Jilks, Morley, and Atkins. The lineup for Heat 13. Like I said, this is going to be a cracker race, I can tell you now, for a start. That is why Heat 15 is Heat 13 is so important. So here we go, Heat 13, third time of asking. And away they go this time, and a flyer from Botel on the inside, and Morley's joined him. Morley's there with him. Botel looks across, see it's Bo Morley. It's Morley goes round the outside of, of Jilks. Leading the way, 5-1 to the Royals of the moment. Jilks has steamed up the inside of Morley. Morley returns the favour, no he doesn't. Jilks has gone across him. Now he'll set up after Botel. Atkins there currently in third place. 
A 4-2 to the Royals. I think there's a little bit sealing for the team tonight. Royals have been so good by Van Atkins and Morley. They're battling for third place. But meanwhile, Botel out in front. It's good work. Good uh, news for the Gladys this season. Was Botel riding like this, so we, it was hard to beat around this track. But Jilks in second. In fact, oh, and Henry's nearly off again. Henry then, then he clapped the fence. But meanwhile, it's going to be a 4-2 for the Royals. Alfie Botsell takes the win. Dan Jilk second, Ben Morley third. And well, what can I say? It's been business as usual for Alfie. So 4-2 heat win for the Royals tonight. So Botsell there takes the win, three points. Ben Morley takes the third place. Dan Jilks takes two. And Henry with the no score there. So 32-46. So mathematically, the Royals have indeed won tonight's match. So Eli Meadows in place of Ben Trigger in gate one in blue. Next to him in uh, white, Joe, Col Joe Alcock. Uh, gate number three in red is Adam Excellence, and on the outside in yellow is Sam Woolley. So two races to go here at the Coliseum. And away they go this time, and a flyer from Joe Alcock. Can Woolley join him around the outside? The answer is indeed no, he can't. Excellence there cuts off his nose and holds the second place. Meanwhile, Joe Alcock there leading the way. Excellence in second, Sam Woolley in third, with Eli Meadows in fourth place there, 4-2. Two at the Royals, which will guarantee the, heat, the match win for the Royals. Alcock there leading the way. Excellent there getting uh, second place. Woolley third. Meadows in fourth. Come around with one lap to go. Alcock there leading. Excellent second. Woolley third. And Meadows at the back. Heat 14 is going to be a win of a 4 2. Guaranteed victory now. Joe Alcock takes the win. So the win there for Joe Olcock, second Adam Extant, third Tom, uh, Sam Woolley, and fourth Eli Meadows. So the team sponsor, Sponsors Heat 15, we have on the inside, will be in the white helmet colour, Alfie Botel. Next him in red will be Henry Atkins, then gate three in yellow, Ben Morley. And on the outside in blue will be Dan Jilks. Dan Jilks in blue. Just waiting for Alfie Patel to make his way onto the track. Here he comes. So then, stand by for action, folks. Heat number 15 is about to be underway. Here we go. It is showtime in the Coliseum. And away they go. And green light go. And away they go again. Botel out in front, looks across. There goes Dan Jilks round the outside. What a move from Dan Jilks. My word, where did he find that grip from? That was sensational. Pulls away now ahead of Botel. Morley there in third place. Atkins at the back. Botel now switched to the outside. And will now chase after Jilks. Whoa, my goodness. And they've both gone down. They've both gone down. The question is who caused it? Who caused it? Alfie went down there and sort of brought... Dan Jilks down with him. We've got da uh, Dan Jilks, Henry Atkins, and Ben Morley. Heat 15, take number two. So, no rider on gate number one, out of Botel excluded. Heat two in red, Henry Atkins. Gate three in yellow, Ben Morley. And on the outside in blue, Dan Jilks for the Centurions. Let's see how this meeting goes, how this race goes. One more race to be decided, the next 45 plus seconds to decide who takes the uh, the spoils in this heat, heat 15. The match already in the bag for the Royals tonight. Can Morley be a spoiler and split the duo? Or can he go? And here we go. Heat 15, second half asking, and away to go. 
And a start there, all three. Oh my goodness me, Jukes on the outside. Gets away, Morley there in second. He split the duo, Atkins in third. Now we've got a race on. Jukes there leading, Morley second. Atkins there in third. 4-2 to the Gladiators, to the Centurions. Jilks there leading the way, he's got Morley right behind him. Atkins there just slowly drifting out the, out the back there. But it's all about Dan Jilks out in front. Dan Jilks there taking the yellow flag with one lap to go. Dan Jilks leading the way, Morley there on his tail. One more lap. Dan Jilks going to finish with another win. Morley second, Atkins there, that's how it's going to finish. As a win for Dan Jilks. Centurions take the 4-2. The Royals take the night. What a win there for Dan Jilks, taking the win. What a night there for Dan Jilks, finishing with another win. With Atkins there taking the third. Botel excluded. Morley takes the second. The Jilks takes the win there. Final score tonight, 52-38 in favour of the Kent Royals. So the final score, Plymouth Centurions 38 and the Kent Royals on 52. So that that is it, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? So I've been down Winchester. Uh, thank you for everyone tuning in. We're going to grab a couple of riders as we head into the pits. So ladies and gentlemen, stick around. A few interviews will be taking place in a few minutes' time. So here we go. Thanks, everyone. Alfie. All right. Obviously, mate, well done for tonight. Obviously, Heat 15, not Hey wanted to end it. Obviously, just give us your thoughts on that one. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it was uh, just racing. So I misjudged it. I thought he was going wide, like, the time before. And uh, he didn't. He went to the inside. So I just got camped. Um, just read the situation a bit wrong. But, yeah, nothing. It's Dan. He's all good. Um, just uh, had a few rides with old man. That was all. But other than that, it's... Uh, all good. It was going to be a good race until that point, but of course, like I said, tonight the Royals were gating a lot more than the Centurions were. Of course, it's good to step for you on Tuesday against the, uh, the Paul Pirates, some of the uh, Gladiators, eh? Yeah? yeah, definitely. So I'm at Paul tomorrow for Biani's meeting, so that should be good as well. So a good bit of practice for next week. So, um, yeah, nah, now now uh, first one's out of the way, all safe and sound, so on to a consistent season, let's hope. I think we'll work on that tonight, and we'll uh, see you on Tuesday. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Matt, if I can, mate, just stop yeah. stepping. Uh, obviously, first match out of the way, obviously, a defeat for the boys tonight, but they did well, didn't they? They did, you know, through it all. Um, you know, it's uh, very much the bad luck was on our side tonight, which it's kind of been prone at Plymouth the last, you know, few seasons. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Kent rode hard. You know, we, we knew they were going to be hard anyway. They always are. Um, but, no, you know, I'm proud of them. They've, they've done what they could, given the circumstances they were given. Um, main thing is, I know, like, Ben and... Uh, Connor a bit beaten up, but we're all going away healthy-ish. Um, obviously, Gladiators next week, so you know Ben, Henry, and Alfie will be back. But um, no, we'll you know rest up now, lick our wounds a bit, and be ready for uh, reimbursement uh, when Bellevue are in town. I said Gladiators next week. So obviously, if the guys can't make it down this night, they'll watch the stream. What can they expect? Well, it's going to be. It's always exciting against Kent National League, but you know, Paul have you know vastly become our sort of fiercer rivals in the in the championship. So um, it's going to be a tough one because Paul, they're, they're dominant every year. Midlow always knows what he's doing, um, but the Gladiators, uh, they're ready. Gladiator ready. And that seventh rider as well. Puh, watch the space. Oh, there we go. Fine talk from over there. Thanks, Bob. There you go, mate. All right. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as you can see, the bikes are now being packed away. Uh, it's a win for the Centra for the uh, Royals tonight. It's 52-38. It's been a great night. First time on the stream. What do you think of it at home? Get your thoughts in on feedback and stuff on the social medias. I've been Dan Winchester. Tune in next week, of course. Yes, indeed. Tuesday, the Paul Pirates are in town against the Gladiators. And hopefully that seventh rider as well. Like I said, as he said, watch this space. Who knows what could happen? Until next week, I've been Dan Winchester. And we'll see you all next week here at the Coliseum. <laughs>